I had seen coral reefs before, but only on black and white TV. When I was five or six, I saved up enough to get my first mask and snorkel and a set of fins. Seeing it in color in such abundance was a revelation. The Great Barrier Reef is great because it's the longest continuous stretch of reef on the planet. It's really composed of millions and millions of different organisms and it's home to the highest biodiversity in the ocean. There are a number of issues affecting it. The one I'm involved with is the control of crown-of-thorn starfish. It's not like one of those cute little uh, cuddly starfish. They're covered with poison spines and they eat large amounts of coral very quickly. Quite a nasty animal. There are more of them now than there ever used to be because of things that people have done. Taking away the predators by overfishing, adding nutrients to the water through farming. At the moment, the way people survey to find starfish outbreaks is to use the manta-tow technique. First step is reliant on towing divers around the reef on a manta board. You can only tow divers at a, a certain speed and then they have to stop every two minutes. Someone records what they've seen and then you continue until you've gone around the whole reef. So it can take all day or longer. We teamed up with CSIRO, Australia's national science agency, to see how we could combine our expertise to solve this problem. CSIRO uh, created this data set with Starfish labeled and developed an EdgeML platform that runs TensorFlow models. The goal was to map out the starfish in real time. Through this machine learning project, we're going to enable teams of divers to quickly suppress the outbreaks. One of the big things that we did in this project to start off was we basically had a Kaggle competition. Um, so we created a data set and challenged the machine learning community to build the most accurate model possible. It was amazing to have more than 2,000 teams around the world join in and submit over 60,000 entries. We used the Kaggle competition results to glean insights into what did and didn't work for this particular task. And we used those to define our own experimentation plan and ended up running hundreds of experiments on Google's internal TPU clusters. The TensorFlow 2 model garden library was the foundation of our code base. We were able to teach a machine learning model how to detect whether or not there is a crown of thorns in that picture and where it is. And then we can create a map um, with all the GPS locations of all the different starfish. We realized that we were having a lot of overfitting problems. Because we had such limited data, we would you know, just learn exactly how to output the correct result for the data we had, but we couldn't generalize. And so that was the big problem that we had to solve with data augmentation. So basically growing our data set by implementing a whole bunch of different techniques. Since we're deploying on the edge, it was really important that we make the model as fast as possible. And then so we found that it was really effective to compile our model with XLA. We also used batching and quantization and even tuned our Anchorbox setup all to make our model even faster. We just had a human go out and we also collected um, GoPro footage and, and the human saw one crown of thorn starfish and the object detection model picked up 20. When we started working on Manitou over 40 years ago, people were still using punch cards, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, no, we couldn't envisage this at all. This is just the beginning of our collaboration with CSIRO. This project has the potential to scale broadly beyond the Great Barrier Reef. Well, we all care about different things, I suppose, and have different value systems, but I grew up as a child in Papua New Guinea snorkeling. And you've just seen it degrade over 45 or 50 years, it's, it is important. I still have that kind of uh, feeling of fascination when I swim in the water today. It's a lot more purposeful because I have jobs to do. I think the future of the reef over the next few decades is going to be tough. But this project and other projects supported by the Great Barrier Reef Foundation really make me feel hopeful.